Hey everybody, what's up? It's time for the D&D &D update. So, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm uploading the Call of Cthulhu update right now. So, um, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a long one because we did a fuck ton of shit this, uh, this week in, D in uh, Pathfinder. I, I can see now why in the adventure path, like, the combat has been somewhat sparse because they just, they throw you. They throw you to the fucking wolves of the sea in this shit. I mean, I'm trying to think. There are, there are seven possible combat uh, uh, encounters, by my count at least, in this adventure. So, um, let's, let's just get from the start. Uh, as you probably know, if you've watched, uh, last, the last update, uh, we ended up capturing a Ratadumi sailing ship, a merchant ship, and, uh, our captain, Captain Harrigan, has tasked, um, Mr. Plugs and fucking Master Scourge, his two fucking shitty-ass toadies, to basically sail the ship to Port Peril so he can sell it. Not sail, sell it, you know, sell. As in, get monetary compensation for giving this boat to somebody else. Not sail, as in, sail the fucking seven seas. Which is actually technically the five seas of Galerion, but <laughs> So, um, uh, we, we get started sailing, and... It becomes pretty clear early on we are not going to Port Peril. Um, consulting with my good old friend Fishguts, uh, we came to the consensus that he is in fact selling us to um, to the to this little cove down in the Muangi expanse, which is basically kind of a mixture of Africa and and. Uh, Tropical South America. It's, it's, you know, jungles, monkeys, fucking poison, shit like that. So he, he's, he's, they're selling us down there to, um, go to a squib. And it's funny because Landon, you know, in character, Landon was like, do you know what a squib is? And my guy was like, a fake blood pack? I don't know. So, uh, a squib is actually somebody like, um, they'll, They'll switch up the lines of the ship, so it, it's much harder to identify a ship. So, you know, they, they'll make cosmetic changes to a ship, make it look different. I uh, probably even make, you know, actual real changes to a ship, maybe more cargo room, living space, uh, weapons, shit like that. So basically, the thing is, plugs and scourge are making a break for it. They're, they want to be their own fucking captain you know they want to be captain no one of the two they want their they want to fucking fly they want to get out of the fucking nest as it were so you know this this kind of hastens up our plan because you know we need to fucking i i look as as much as i dislike captain harrigan at least you know where you fucking stand with captain harrigan yeah he's a fucking monster yeah he, he threw that motherfucking Right, a doomy sailor off the fucking ship to prove a point, but like, he's not gonna do more than he has to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he had to throw that fucking right a doomy sailor off the ship. He had to show that he wasn't fucking taking shit, and he fucking means it. So how do you show that? You fucking feed a motherfucker to some sharks. That's makes fucking perfect sense to me. But scourge and plugs. They're just dickholes. They're fucking... They're sadists, basically. And it's like, fuck that shit. Like, I'll be honest. I wouldn't re if If it wasn't for Scourge and Plugs, I honestly wouldn't be fucking considered mutant and, mutiny and, and at all. Because I actually, I actually do like Captain Harrigan, you know? He's a fucking... He's a monster. But again, you know where you fucking stand with the monster. You know, just don't fucking talk to him. Don't look at him. When he fucking tells you to do something, you fucking do it. Scourge and fucking plugs, they'll, they'll fucking try to kill you when, you know, they'll just kill you because they don't like you. So, um, so, uh, we, we've been, for, for, it started off slow. We were basically making repairs as we went along. And then there was a storm. So, you know, kind of standard storm ship. But then... 
you start hearing her like I'm trying to make sucker sounds. So we basically on deck pop up six or seven of uh, fuck, what are they? Uh Grundy Grundy Lows, I think they are. Grundy Lows. They're basically aquatic goblins. They're you know, they look like goblins. They look like blue skinned goblins from the waist up and from the bottom they look like octopuses. So, you know, we got a couple of these fuckers, and we start fucking attacking them. And this is something really fucking interesting with my character. Now that he's become a second level, he's really fucking become a combat-oriented character. It really is weird. Like, my character has a strength of 9 and a constitution of 10. That's... Usually, if you if you just looked at my, my stats and I told you, Hey, I'm... I'm the fucking, I'm the backup frontline fighter. You'd be like, bull fucking shit, dude. Your party's fucked. But with the mutagens, and now my access to more and more extracts, I could just buff my fucking self to shit and back. Like, I literally become the fucking Hulk. I can, I, I fucking grow bigger. My skin fucking grows thicker. I literally grow as big as a fucking giant. I get a huge fucking strength boost. And I can fucking, you know, I can do other shit like shield and fucking, ex and, you know, run fast and shit like that. So, it really is weird. My character has, you know, even though he's so fucking weak when he's not all buffed up, he really has become a fucking huge integral part of our, of our parties, of our parties, you know, combat. I actually might be, a, I might actually be a better fighter than fucking the Barbarian. Fratus... He's got those two weapons, so he deals a lot of fucking damage. But on the inverse, I do have sneak attack, and like that sneak attack is really fucking good. It's like seriously, fucking sneak attack. Like that's if you can get fucking sneak attack, and you're you're fucking melee oriented, you're like you. That's fucking it. It really is. Like seriously, second level sneak attack, that's 2d6, that's the same amount of damage as a greatsword, you're basically, when you sneak attack somebody at level 2, I mean, not actual level 2, it's level 3 when you get level 2 sneak attack, but, you know what I'm saying, you're actually hitting somebody with the same amount of fucking force as somebody with a greatsword, and that's just level 2, once you get to, like, level 3 sneak attack, level 4, that's 4d6, like, at most, I can get 10d6. That's fucking an extra 10 to 60 fucking damage. Think about that. That is fucking insane. So, you know, combine fucking my sneak attack and, you know, my ability to fucking buff myself, I become a really fucking monstrous melee fighter. So, you know, we're fucking ripping these fuckers apart. You know, I grow to fucking, you know, giant size and I bring my fucking trident down on one of these sons of bitches fucking heads. Silver's bumbles is fucking up again. But to be fair, Landon's fucking playing it. So, you know, part of me is like, Landon's just fucking silver over. It's, you know. Fratus is fucking cool. Hey, how fucking CJ. CJ literally killed more fucking people this fucking game that I've seen him kill in a long fucking time. It's, it's fucking amazing. So, you know, I think CJ managed to kill like two or three of the fucking Grundy Lows. So we managed to kill them all. But, unfortunately, two of our crew is missing. And the worst fucking part of it is, is they're both people who are friendly towards us. And the really fucking worst part, the fucking most abominably worst fucking part of it is one of the people missing is Sandara. She is the cleric. She is the one who can fucking heal us. Y yeah, you fucking... So, like... And she was an integral fucking part of our mutiny plan. So, fuck, man. We're fucked. So, um... We... we, we dealing with the Grundy Lows, we, we run aground against the Coral Reef. So, we have to make boat repairs and restock we we our characters got the restocking roll so we had to go over to this little island that we wrecked near to gather some fresh water so first thing first to kind of 
bland fucking shit. We uh, we swim over to the tallest. Well, not swim. We we had a boat. We boat over to like the tallest peak that we can see. Climb up it. Look around. Get a get a lay of the land and shit. <laughs> and it's funny because Landon gave us the wrong map. Because there, there's, like, two maps. You know, there, there's the map you give to the player. And then there's the map you, as the DM, keep. Because the map that the DM has, has things like combat marked out. Landon gave us the DM map so we could see, like, oh, there's X's on this map. <clears throat> I wonder what those could mean. They were combat. So we decide to, you know, since we, we surveyed the land, we decided to play play it fucking by the rules. So we we go to where the first X is, and it's um it's a mud pit. It's like it's like a it's a, like a, a quagmire, if you will. So we had to jump across on these little poles or go up through the top of the trees, whichever one. Uh, my character decides to do it first because everybody else is like, no, we need to climb up through the trees. And no, we know, blah, 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 blah. So my character's just like, fuck this shit. So he actually jumps across fucking easily. He doesn't fucking fail once. He's like, fuck you, bitches. So then it comes Fratus's turn. He falls in. Then it comes S Silver's turn. He falls in. Then it comes CJ's turn. He falls in. Every fucking buddy but me fell fucking in. And if that wasn't bad enough, you know, landing in quicksand, especially for someone like Fryas' character, who has fairly heavy weapons and armor, two fucking giant crabs decide to fucking pop out and see what's going on. So, you know, the crabs are fucking harassing them while they're trying to get their food, foot in. Thankfully, CJ had his whip, so he was able to fairly quickly get out of the fucking muck by just, you know, whipping at something. Get, you know, Indiana Jones and fucking it. And Silver, Silver was just, Silver literally fucking fell off first fucking thing. Like, he didn't even get on the first fucking peg. He fucking fell. He fu he bumble fucked it. It's Bumbles. That's what Bumbles does. He bumble fucks everything he touches. So, they're on the shore and they're just like peening fucking, they're peening arrows at these fucking crabs. And, Barely fucking, it's just, it, they're glancing off the fucking shells. And the crabs are just like, they're double fucking teaming Frass. Frass had some really fucking horrible luck. And I'm going to get more into that fucking later. But, man, he had some fucking terrible luck. He, he was just, he was off. Like, we use this new program, Roll D20. Because it's like a virtual tabletop. You can, like, put up the maps and, like, tokens and shit. And track out, like, combat and shit. The dice roller they use, the program they use for the dice roller, is even fucking worse. It's even worse. I'm not joking. It's even worse than the Wizards of the Coast online dice roller. Because, I mean, at the very least, with the Wizards of the Coast online dice roller, it either gives you really fucking high rolls or really fucking low rolls. Like, the dice roller with D roll D20 is just all low it's everything's fucking low that's why i'm glad landon let us fucking you know use these real dice god that's, that is the worst fucking sound ever is it I can see people just like, ah, fuck you, Napalm, you son of a fucking bitch, my ears are bleeding. God, that, that fucking has even hurt my ears, I'm gonna stop that, I'm not gonna do that anymore. So, um, yeah, I, I, I use my real dice. The one D20 is a fucking bitch, but the other D20 is really fucking good. I don't know why, I don't know what's up with the 1D20, it just, it rolls fucking low. I don't believe in luck and all that fucking shit, but it's just weird. Like, the 1D20, I've never rolled anything fucking higher with it than fucking 14. So, where was I? God, that fucking, that noise just obliterated whatever the fuck was in my mind. Um, let me take a quick drink of water.
Oh yeah, giant crap. So, help Frat us out. I'm actually fucking proud of this shit because I actually played this shit fucking smart. I was over on the opposite river uh, bank. So I took my trident out and I just, I start fucking smacking the water, making fucking sounds like a, a wounded animal or a wounded person or whatever, trying to draw one of the crabs to me because, you know, I, I, you know, I made the observation that, okay, crabs didn't fuck with us when we were jumping on the poles. They only start fucking us when somebody fell in. So maybe if I make enough noise in the muck, the crab will fucking be like, ooh, what's, what's fucking this? So, Frass ends up killing the one crab with one hammer fucking strike. And CJ and and uh, Silver's character, technically landed, managed to end up killing the other crab by shooting a hundred fucking arrows. At. Not really a hundred arrows, but it fucking... Like, this was one of the longest fucking combats I've ever been in Dungeons and & Dragons. And it was two fucking crabs! Two! And they weren't even that bigger than us. They were about the same fucking size. Two! <clears throat> that combat literally took like an hour and a half. Also, it took so long because we had to make like fucking 12 acrobatic check. That's something I'm not liking about. I'll be honest. That's something I don't like about this campaign is the redundant rolls. Because like when you're climbing a mast, you have to make like Five fucking climb checks. I'd rather they just make one hard fucking climb check instead of just five fucking easy ones. Because it just... that's That shit really fucking slows down the game. Where it's like, oh, you gotta make five fucking skill checks now in a fucking row. Because usually you're gonna, you're usually gonna fuck one of them up. You're usually gonna fuck one of them up. So, yeah, that shit just really slows down the game. You, you know... If anything, I, I wish they had a better fucking system to fucking mitigate, like, multiple fucking rolls. But, you know, they don't. But, you know, it might be something they work on later on or in a later edition. I don't know. So, uh, we get past the crabs. And we make it to a tent. A, uh, like, a little tent that's surrounded by a tree. So, Frass is like, oh boy, let me look under the fucking tent. He goes underneath the tent. As soon as he fucking goes underneath the tent, three fucking ghouls pop out to attack him. Again, like I said, Frass, bad fucking luck this week. So, and this is the weirdest fucking thing. Like, that was the thing I thought we'd have the most fucking trouble with. And I actually wasted my fucking mutagen, my extract of enlarged person, and something else. I actually wasted a lot of shit to fight these fucking ghouls, and Van the Frass pretty much just fucking took him out by himself. Sorry, I had a burp. So, um, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Uh, Frass ghouls. So yeah, uh, these were horror ghouls, by the way. Um, we could tell by how they were dressed. You know, they're their ghoulish tits were all fucking hanging out, and they had, like, five fucking gallons of whore fucking perfume. So, you know, we loot the fucking bodies of anything of worth, and, you know, just move on. Now, this is where there's another possible combat situation, but we we pretty much moved the fuck on. Uh, there are some coconut trees, which clearly showed markings of giant coconut crabs. And, you know, if you ever seen these fuckers, they're, they're, they look like giant, they look like a fucking, they look, you know what they really look like? They look like a hermit crab. Like, if a hermit crab was a Pokemon, like, a coconut crab would be like it's evolved form. Like, they, 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 they literally look like fucking hermit crabs. They got the, the same little old downside point in fucking, um, claws. They got the little fucking curly lobster tail looking fucking thing. They're really fucking weird. So, you know, I didn't want to fucking mess with them. So I was like, let's just move the fuck on here. So we move on from there. Um, uh, we get to a field. That was another possible combat because Landon let it fucking slip. Because, you know, we just saw a field. And it's like, we're not going in there. It's, it's just a fucking field. It's not like, oh, fucking, holy shit, man. It's a field of fucking diamonds. Let's fucking go up in that shit. 
It's just a fucking field. So Landon let it slip that there's uh, an Anchorage, which if you don't know D&D, an Anchorid is basically imagine a cockroach and a worm crossed together with a, with a hint of the alien from Alien. So they're they're basically giant, wormy kind of creepy crawly things that are fucking highly acidic. They they they're fucking assholes. But the cool thing about them is they're also intelligent. So if if you can find one that understands, and that's the fucking problem, you gotta find one that understands the language you're fucking speaking. You can actually fucking turn them on your side. In fact, in the flavor text of older editions. They would mention how some farmers in, you know, more savage areas would actually strike up friendships with these things because their burrowing helps uh, aerate the uh, the soil, allows water fucking through it, you know, make, improves the soil, basically like an earthworm. But we, we managed to fucking knife, not fuck, fight that fucker, so that was pretty good. Um, we get up to a small stockade on the island, which uh, has a little fresh stream coming out of it. So, Fratus is like, I'm gonna fill up the barrels. <laughs> fucking is attacked. Like, right off the fucking bat, is attacked as soon as he steps foot through the fucking door. And, um, the, he was attacked by a variant of a classic Dungeons & Dragons monster, the Choker. Which, uh, Chokers, the best way to describe the Choker, in my opinion, is basically think of the Slender Man. It really is. Like, they got... They got long fucking arms. They got lo- arms that are, are that are like double the fucking length that they are. They they move unnaturally quickly. They they, uh, they they prefer darkness. They're really good fucking sneaks. They basically are kind of like the Slender Man. I'll be honest. I I wouldn't be surprised if, if if you know the the people who came up with the Slender Man mythos weren't you know were familiar with the uh, Choker. They get their name, by the way, because that's what they do. They got, like, these giant fucking hands that are kind of covered in fucking spikes so they can grapple really good. So they grapple people and then they constrict and strangle them to death. So uh, we were fighting some vine uh, chokers. I think, like, four? Four or five. So uh, we managed to hack our ways through them. Thankfully... I found some alchemist fire over near the fucking whore tent. So, you know, I was able to use that to great effect against uh, at least one of the fucking uh, vine chokers. And then uh, we we noticed a small hut inside of the stockade once we had dealt with the chokers. Again, Fratus is like, I'm going to go in and explore it. He's attacked by a fucking ghast. Now, if you don't know what a ghast is, they're basically stronger, meaner, more vicious fucking versions of the ghoul. And uh, a bot fly swarm, which is basically, you know, just a giant fucking cloud of fucking burrowing, biting fucking insects that can actually turn you into a fucking ghoul. So, he's fucked. So, you know, he's screaming, so we run to the fucking cabin. I, again, I fucking, you know, once Fratus is out of the way, I start just chucking fucking alchemist fire. Because thankfully, the gas, I'm going to say this right off the bat, if the gas hadn't been tied up, and that's what happened. Like, we later find out this dude, he was part of this shipwreck crew, and he was the last one to survive. But, you know, he got lonely, so he's about to commit suicide, but the bot fly swarm got him, so he didn't properly kill himself, so then he became a a gas. So, you know, this dude was like, he was hanging from the roof in the center of the building. I was like, hey, Landon, if I throw alchemist fire in a building, the walls will block it, right? He's like, yes. And I'm like, well, that's what I'm fucking doing. So I'm just like fucking chucking alchemist fire at this fucking thing. CJ and fucking silver firing bows at him. And Fratus is pretty much just like. (laughs) But you know what? I I don't give fucking Fratus shit for fucking cowering. Because you know what? After the fucking day he had, I can understand it. 
So uh, we managed to defeat the gas, and we managed to defeat the botfly swarm. They were actually pretty hard, because swarms are actually... Swarms are surprisingly fucking difficult in Dungeons & Dragons. You, you know, you would think, like, oh, it's just, it's just a fucking cloud of insects. Like, fuck it. If you don't have things that affect an area, like, say, Alchemist Fire or a Fireball spell, it's really fucking hard because, you know... You're ba like, if you're using a slashing or a piercing weapon, you're basically, like, killing one fucking fly at a time. And that's, that's fucking shitty. Like, it, it's a little bit better with a bludgeoning weapon, but it's still, it takes a long fucking time unless, you know, you have the proper fucking things to deal with the swarm. So, we, we defeat those, and we notice that there's a, a spyglass that's, that's kind of stationary. It's been built into this little fucking thing into the wall to make it stay in one spot. So we look out of it, and lo and behold, we see two Grundy Lows, kind of like, you know, doing whatever the fuck Grundy Lows do when they're off times. But we notice one of the Grundy Lows, Grundy Lows happened to have uh, a tricorner hat that belonged to Sandara. So, right off the bat, that... That at least gives us hope that Sindara is alive. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't give two fucking shits about the gnome that was also taken. Like, I'm not joking, if we have to run from the Grundy Lows and, you know, we have to slow them down, and I'm carrying the fucking gnome, <laughs> guess what's fucking going to happen, fuckers? That gnome is getting chucked over my fucking shoulder, and he's going to meet the fucking, you know, he's going to meet the worst fucking parts of Grundy Lows digestive system, if you know what I mean. So, um, and that's where we concluded this adventure. So, next, this week seems like it's going to be shaping up to a pretty, pretty, you know, pretty good conclusion to this part. You know, we're going to have to fight the fucking Grundy Lows, probably save our companions, and then get back to the ship. One thing I'm thinking, we, fa we found some treasure. One thing I'm thinking of doing is maybe using some of that to kind of bribe the other fucking people, the people who maybe... Who, who don't necessarily hate our fucking guts, the, the people who are just, like, in front, uh, not that friendly towards us, maybe buy them over. Be like, hey, I know you guys don't really like us that much, but maybe you'll like this silver ring. Maybe you'll like this silver locket. You know, that kind of thing. Also, I was thinking maybe, just maybe, if we if we can pretend to fall asleep one night, we can just coup de gras some of the people who fucking hate us. And that way, that would make it a much more even fight. Because at least between Fratus, Silver, and myself, we could at least kill three people right off the fucking bat. Coup de Gras on them. Especially me, since I have fucking sneak attack and a coup de Gras is an automatic critical. And they're denied fucking flat, their AC bonus. So that's like fucking, right off the fucking bat, that's going to be a shit fucking ton of damage I fucking do. And Fratus is fucking, Fratus' weapons, I think, he, I think all, both of his weapons deal times three critical damage, so that's gonna be fucking, and Silver uses a fucking greatsword, so, you know, think about that, showing somebody, a greatsword up somebody's fucking asshole in the middle of the night, that's gonna fucking, that's gonna ruin their fucking day, you know, if they're still fucking alive afterwards. So yeah, I can't, I can't, I cannot wait to fucking mutiny. I really can't. I can't wait to fucking be our own fucking crew that make up our own bullshit fucking arbitrary laws to fucking punish people. <sighs> it's going to be fucking awesome. So anyways, I've babbled enough on about this adventure. So watch for the next one.